right. Good morning, everybody. Great to see everybody. Thank you so much for coming this morning. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here, and I'm excited today to share with you God's Word. Amen. Are you ready to get into the Word? All right. If you brought your Bibles, go ahead and get them out. Or if you're a note taker like me, I'm going to give you lots of scriptures and lots of notes to take today as we dive into the topic of how to hear God's voice. As Rory talked about uh, before, we based this series on questions that, that you have asked, things that you wonder about, things that you want to know more about um, in, your, in your life. And so this is obviously one of the biggest, most pressing questions that I get asked as a pastor. And even as a, as a younger Christian, it was a question that I asked all the time. How can I hear you better, God? How can I know that it's really you speaking to me and not my own inner dialogue, my own thoughts, or not, not that I don't want to hear the voice of the enemy, and I don't want to hear things just because I ate pizza the night before. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know that what I'm hearing is of God. And how do I know that? And it's an important question. It's a very good uh, uh, thing to, to think about for your own life. And so we want to answer the question, how can I hear God? I've said it countless times as a young Christian. Maybe you said it. Maybe you're here today and you're saying something like this. I don't ever hear God. I wish I could hear God. I just don't ever hear him. It's like when I pray, my prayers bounce off the ceiling and there's nothing but crickets. Maybe that I've been there before. Maybe you're there now. Or maybe you're at a place where you're just like you, you, you very rarely hear from God. It's like once in a blue moon, you would hear something that you think is a message from God, but you're here today and you may be like, I want to hear God more regularly. Because how many of you know that God is speaking all the time? And it's not his fault, with, it's not his, his communication, it's oftentimes our receiving that is the problem. And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more today. Or, or maybe you, you may just be like me and you're just like, I just want to make sure that I'm hearing from God and not some other voice. How do I do that? And so I want to talk to you about that. But uh, before we do, let's just let's pray and ask the Lord to open our hearts, open our minds, and open our spiritual ears that we can receive and believe the truth this morning. So Father God, we thank you for this time to look to your word, and we pray that the precious Holy Spirit would now illuminate our hearts. Show us the truth of your word today, and help us to hear your voice more clearly. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. I think to begin with, most of us would probably agree with this statement. Um, that God is a God who speaks. God is a speaking God. He's speaking all the time. He, you think about God as he was revealed in the scriptures and you see that he is a relational God. He is a relational being. He wants relationship. He wants fellowship. He wants to know and to be known by his people. He loves to relate. In fact, God wants you to hear him even more than you want to hear him. He wants you to experience his voice because he knows that we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is life for you. It's life for you. And this notion that God has stopped speaking Somewhere along the way is simply not true. So we want to go ahead and clear that up and establish the fact that God does speak. He speaks in all kinds of different ways, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But he is very relational. And if you've bought into the lie that he is no longer speaking, I want to counter that. And I just want to tell you that he does speak. And he will speak to you and he wants you to to recognize and act upon his voice. In fact, the third verse of the Bible, back in Genesis, the creation story, we see that God said, God spoke. What did he say? He spoke creation 
into existence. And all throughout the Bible, we see God speaking, interacting, revealing himself. Even at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, Jesus spoke to the church seven different times. And he says, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. How many of you guys have ears to hear? Okay, so that's what I've been praying for, for you and for myself, is that we would have ears to hear, not what the world says, not what our culture says, not what the devil says, but we would have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to each one of us. Amen? And I believe God wants us to hear his voice clearly, especially as we're moving into the end times, I believe. We're going to be confronted with all kinds of opportunities to be deceived. And now, more than ever, I believe that it's important that we know clearly the voice of God as opposed to any counterfeits that may try to get our attention these days. And I want to tell you this. If I'm sitting with you uh, having coffee at Starbucks and we're talking about this, I'm going to tell you, forget all the formulas. Forget all the, all the uh, gimmicks that you may have been taught in church about how to hear God's voice. Forget all of that stuff. And I would encourage you to focus on your relationship with him. Focus on getting to know him more. Forget all the 10 steps to hear God's voice and do this and do that. But think about your relationship with him because he is so relational. And, and I would encourage you, forget about religion. Like forget about checking off the religious boxes of this and that, this and that. But yes, you focus on your relationship with him. And how do you have a relationship you share with one another, right? You share who you are, and you listen, and you let him share who he is. What God says in prayer is much more important than what you say. So God is a speaking God, and I believe that in order to hear him clearly, we need to forget the fluff and develop the kind of relationship with God that will empower us to hear him more clearly. And I would tell you this, the closer that we get to God, the more that we will experience transformational conversations with him. He'll change us from the inside out to become the people that we need to become. That he's shaping us, he's molding us. And as a result of this relationship, we're able to hear his voice more clearly. And we'll learn the truth of this verse found in Matthew 4.4, 4, where Jesus answered. And he says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen. What is every word that comes out of the mouth of God? It is his voice. It's what he's saying. And if we have ears to hear, let us be people who hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because it will be life to you. It will be life to you. So for your life, I want you to think about this morning the fact that God may choose a variety of different ways to speak to you based upon your circumstances, uh, based upon particular uh, times and seasons in your life, you may hear God's message in a very dramatic sense. I mean, I've heard people talk about like they've heard the audible voice of God before. I mean, if you hear the voice of God just like Rory thundered like, like Moses, we, we, we would hear that. And that's an unmistakable, that's a very dramatic way to hear God's voice. But I got to tell you, it's not that common. It's not that common. God may speak to you in that way. He may speak to you through an angelic visitation. He may speak to you through dreams, through visions, uh, through miraculous events. God speaks in all of those ways. I do believe that. 
But more often than not, God is going to speak through the Holy Spirit through what we call the still, small voice. He's going to speak in that still, small voice. Some people will call it an inner knowing. I just knew on the inside what God was saying to me. Or some people call it a prompting. A prompting of the Holy Spirit. It's something that is inward. How many of you know that if we're born again, if we're in Christ, Jesus Christ indwells us through the Holy Spirit? And so when he speaks, he's going to speak to our spirits. It's going to be that still, small voice oftentimes or those inner spiritual promptings. God will even download desires And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But he will give us desires. And he will use the ordinary practices of reading the Bible, spending some quiet time in prayer, attending church, going to a life group, or interacting with other godly people. God will use those kinds of regular, everyday, ordinary practices in order to speak his word to us. Let me say it this way, and this is up on the screen if you want to jot this down. God speaks most often by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. I want you to jot that down, take a picture of it, memorize this, and just remember this is most often the way we hear God's voice. If we will just leave that up on the screen, and I'm going to talk about briefly each one of those things. The Bible. How many of you know the Bible is God's word? The Bible is the authoritative word of God. And I will tell you over and over again, the most consistent The most reliable, the most healthy way to hear God's voice is by spending time in your Bible. Boy, I thought I'd get a better amen than that. Okay? Now, the Holy Spirit will quicken. That's like a King James word for make something come alive. Okay? The Holy Spirit will quicken scriptures From his word to our hearts. Have you ever been reading a passage of scripture and something just jumped right off the page and it's like, wow, this is God's voice for me right now. This is one of the most powerful, one of the most common ways to hear God's voice. Read his word until you hear his voice. Spend time in the word and ask him to speak to you. In fact, I was thinking about this and reflecting upon our journey and our uh, relocation from Tennessee to Las Vegas to plant this church. And God used his word to speak that confirmation to us. In fact, it's over in, uh, I was just looking at it this morning. It's in Isaiah 43 where the, Lord, where the Lord says, Do not remember the former things. Nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. This verse is where the name of our church comes from. Now it springs forth. Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? Even I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And during our time of prayer and fasting and just seeking God's will and direction, it was this verse that exploded off of the screen and made its way, I said the screen, right? Off of the page and made its way back into our hearts. It was God's voice for us at that particular time. And this is how God speaks many times when we spend time in the Bible. He will quicken Verses to you in different situations of your life. <clears throat> Number two is prayer. Prayer is so important, and I said it before. 
What God says in prayer is much more important to, than what you say in prayer. God speaks to us, and this is just a side note. God speaks to us oftentimes. I've experienced this. Maybe you have as well. He, he downloads desires into our hearts. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody or in a situation where you yourself said, God's been changing my heart about this certain thing. He's been working on me. He's been changing my heart in this particular area. And you may remember that scripture. I think it's in Proverbs, but it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I think sometimes we misinterpret that into, you know, God's going to give us whatever we want. But I think that what we need to understand is this. As we're delighting in him, as we're taking joy and fulfillment in our relationship with him, what happens? He downloads his desires into our hearts. And so that begins a process of changing our hearts. Maybe we, we enjoyed, I was talking to somebody last week. He said, Pastor, I, I'm at a job right now, and I've enjoyed it up to this point, but there's a, uh, there's a holy dissatisfaction going on in my life, and I feel like God's changing my heart. And I wonder, if, is God calling me to this different area of work? And I said to him, are you delighting yourself in him? Are you spending time in the word? Are you praying? Are you worshiping? I said, yes. I'm doing those things. I love, he said, I love Jesus now more than I ever have. And I said, well, could it be that God is downloading his desires into your heart so that what you want aligns with what he wants? And so this is a way that God speaks to us. And it's not a booming, audible voice, but it happens as we walk with him in relationship. It happens as we commune with him on the everyday things. The third thing is this, our circumstances. God, we hear God's voice through our circumstances. I think about the uh, prophet in the Old Testament named Jonah. Uh, God spoke to him first through his voice. But Jonah didn't listen to God's voice. You ever been there? I've been there. He didn't heed the voice of God. And so God spoke to Jonah through circumstances. First, being swallowed by a great fish. Second, a, a vine grew up uh, to shade Jonah miraculously. And then that vine withered away again miraculously. This is all in Jonah chapters 1 through 4. But we, we need to sometimes examine our circumstances, like look around in our lives and, and see if God may be speaking through something that is happening around us or to us. And a couple questions might be, what's happening right now in my life? Because I want to be aware, like what's the reality? What's really going on right now in my life? And the second question is, is God speaking to me through these circumstances the fourth thing is this God speaks through the church he does we see it all throughout the scripture we I've experienced it myself uh, God will bring us into community into a family of believers and God will speak through a pastor a teacher counselors prophetic voices uh, this pattern is all throughout the Bible God speaks through other human beings God brings wise and Christ-like people into our lives and he speaks to us through them now as we grow in our relationship with the Lord and we begin to walk out our God-given purpose and follow after what he's called us to do, we must be able to recognize or authenticate the voice of God. In other words, we need to grow in our confidence that the things we are hearing are, in fact, from God. Otherwise, we can go into deception. We can be led away by a false humility and pride and we can believe all kinds of lies 
that the enemy would love for us to believe if we don't know how to authenticate. Is that a word? If we don't know how to recognize that it's really God speaking to us. First John, it says this. This is re- really important for us today. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. In other words, don't be naive. There are other spirits out there vying for your attention and trying to speak to you, trying to deceive you, trying to lie to you. But what God wants you to know is the truth. And the truth is everything that proceeds out of his mouth, which is life to you. And I wish somebody had told me this in the early, early on in my Christian walk. It would have saved me a lot of mistakes. It would have saved me a lot of bad decisions and a lot of roads that I went down that I should not have gone down. But there are four questions that I use every single time in my own life when I feel like God is speaking to me about something. Or if I'm having coffee with a friend and they say, hey, I feel like I've got a message from God. Do you think it's from him? And I've got four questions. It serves as like a filter for me. And I want to give them to you and write write these down cuz these will these will these will help you in your everyday life. Because if you answer yes to these questions, you're most likely hearing God's voice, his authentic voice. If you answer no to one or more of these questions, you might need to proceed with caution or you might need to not proceed at all. Question number 1 is this, does it line up with the Bible? Is it in alignment with God's word? Is it consistent with what he has revealed in the scripture? Is it consistent with his heart? Is it consistent with his character? Or is it not? If, what if you hear a voice that says, no, you don't need to pray today. Is that God? No. The Bible clearly says We should be devoted to prayer and pray continuously. What if you hear the voice that says, don't read the word today, or don't go to church this weekend, or don't give, or don't serve? Or what if you hear a voice that says, "Uh, Jesus is really not Lord? Or what if you hear the voice that says, Jesus is not the only way to God the Father? These things are clearly spelled out in the word of God. My friends, this is why it's so important that we know God's word, that we spend time in the truth, that we meditate on it, that we uh, apply it to our lives. Because, because why? You love me, don't you? Okay, I love you too. <clears throat> if all the Bible you are getting is from us on a Sunday morning, you are very spiritually malnourished. And if you are spiritually malnourished, you will be well on your way to a life full of deception, believing in lies, pride, and wrong decisions. That's why it's so important to know God's word for yourself. It's why it's so important. Don't just take the word of a pastor or a preacher or somebody you see on TV Dive into it for yourself. See what it says. Discover God's truth on your own. Amen? I want us to, I want us to grow up. Amen? Is it okay to be challenged? Okay. I want us to grow in our faith and not just be infants any, any, any longer. We need to put aside the infancy and say, no, I'm going to grow up. I'm going to learn God's word myself. I'm going to start making the right decisions myself. And I'm going to stop being a baby and and draining everybody around me and coming and only diving into the word on a Sunday morning. But what are you doing on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday? Where are your thoughts at? Where's your study time? Where's your meditation time? 
It's time we grow up and we put aside the ways of our infancy. Why? God's voice will always be in alignment with his word. It will always be in consistent in it will always be consistent with the Bible. Look at Luke 21 verse 33. It says this, and th- and though all of heaven and all of earth shall pass away, yet my words remain forever true. If you're looking for the truth, look for his word and hear his voice. Number two question, not only does it, does it line up with the Bible, is this. Will it make me more like Christ? God's never going to say anything to you or through you that will not develop Christ-like in you. What if I'm hearing a voice that's encouraging me to cheat or to lie or, or to sin in some way? It's not the voice of God. What if I'm hearing thoughts um, that, that's leading me not to be Christ-like in my thinking or my actions? You can be assured that it is not the voice of God in your life. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, in your lives you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Is what I'm hearing, will it make me? More like Christ. If the answer is no, forget it. It's not from God. Number three question is this. Does does godly counsel agree? The Bible speaks a lot about the importance of having godly counsel in your life. Does godly counsel agree with the message that you might be hearing? And I would, I would tell you this, when you're getting godly counsel about any uh, issue or problem that you may have, don't cherry pick. Like, don't pick people who you know are going to tell you what you want to hear, right? Find somebody who is m- mature and knowledgeable and wise in the word of God and has experience following after God and doesn't mind telling you something difficult, Go after those people. Ask those people for their godly advice. It says this in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of fools seem right to them, but the wise do what? They listen to advice. They listen to advice. Number four question is this. Do I have peace? Do I have peace about it? Is what, is what God's speaking to me, is it bringing confusion, is it bringing chaos, or is it bringing a sense of calm and peace in my inner man? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 says this, For God is not the author of confusion, but of what? Of peace. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 The Apostle Paul says this, let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. Everybody say that word, rule. Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. It goes on to say, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. But I looked up that word, rule. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Rule can mean like it's the controlling factor. It's the deciding influence. One thing I read is like it comes from the word like like our like our understanding of umpire. Like in a baseball game, the one who's behind the plate calling the balls and the strikes. Like let the peace of Christ rule. Call the shots. Be the determining factor in your life and your decision making if it causes anxiety if it causes worry guess what it's probably not from God not that everything that God says is easy because it's not sometimes there are corrective things that he says sometimes there are rebukes that he says but if it's from God you will have a down deep peace about it that he is the one speaking to you 
And I like to say it this way, some, sometimes, or seldom, the right thing is the easy thing. Or the easy thing, the right thing. But still, even if God speaks a difficult word to you, you will still sense the peace of God that it is him who is speaking to you. In the depth of your being, you will know that it is truly God. So what's, our, what's my encouragement to you as you think about hearing God's voice in your own life, in your situations, at, at work, at school, in all of your relationship, in, in all of your relationships and decision making that you have to do? What would I encourage you to do? Number one is this, tune in to God every day. Like get into his frequency Listen to him every day. Spend time in the word and in prayer and in worship. And the more that you will do that, the more that you will cultivate your relationship with him, the more often you will hear his voice clearly in your life. And the next thing I would encourage you to do, uh, well, actually, I want to share Proverbs 3 with you. It says this from the message paraphrase. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything that you do, everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. And don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Tune in to him. Every day and not just on Sunday mornings. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Second thing is this. Tune out. Things that oppose God. Man, there's something, there's, we got to tune in to God, but let's just cut out all the things that oppose God. Think about what you're listening to. Think about what you're, what you're reading. Think about the entertainment that you allow into your life. Like, think, of, think about what you think about, right? Think about what you think about. And tune out everything that opposes God and the truth of his word. <clears throat> James 4, 7. I love James because he just tells it like it is. He says this in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some of us need to step up, step up our resistance. Right? We're being too passive. We're being too lazy when the lies come our way, when the attacks and the deceptions come our way. We're just like, oh, it's just another day. No, but we need to like actively resist the devil. Actively resist. Push back and submit yourselves to God. And how do you resist? You stand on God's word and you pray against him by the power of the Holy Spirit. You plead the blood of Jesus and you say, "Devil, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I'm going to oppose what you're telling me and I'm going to submit my life and my thoughts to God and God alone. Devil, I resist you, Satan, not today." And the last thing I would tell you is this. Man, take steps towards what God has spoken. Like put action to it. When God speaks to you, many times it will cause a crisis of belief. And you will be like, is that really God? And you discover, you go through, you ask those four questions and you think, oh, well, this probably is from God. And if it is from God, it's going to cause you to take some kind of action steps, right? It's not going to just leave you, leave you alone and just say, continue on with your merry life. There's going to be some kind of action that hearing the voice of God is going to necessitate. You're going to be required in some form or fashion to do something in response to hearing his voice. So what are your next steps? What's God been saying to you? It says this in John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. And they follow me. They listen. They're known. 
and they take steps to follow. There's action involved. Amen? So I'm going to invite Star, uh, when you're done taking notes, come on up and play softly, and we're going to enter a time of prayer. I just want to invite everyone to stand with me, please, because I believe that God is speaking directly to some of us here today, and he's telling us things about our lives. He's telling us things about our thoughts. He's telling us things about what we've been involved with or how he wants to use us or how he wants to take us on our next step. Some of you have been hearing words about destiny, words about calling in your life. And God may be speaking to you about your desi- the desires of your heart. He may have been in that, you may be in that whole process of God changing your heart on something. And trust me, if God's doing that, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. Don't neglect it. Don't ignore it. Don't put it off. But listen to whatever it is, God may be speaking to you. Amen? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth that you bring us to. We thank you, Lord, that it teaches us, that it guides us, that it's life to us. And so, Lord, today, as a body of believers, we just want to submit to you and resist the devil. And we say, Lord, let our ears be open, let our hearts be open to what the Holy Spirit is saying to each one of us. Father, speak your words of affirmation to us. Speak your words of love and attention to us. Speak your words of peace to our hearts. Lord, as we sang about earlier, draw us closer. Take us deeper in our relationship with you and our ability to hear your voice. And Father, as we do hear your voice, we pray today that you would give us the strength and the courage to take action. To change what we need to change to walk away from the things we need to walk away from and to run to you Father touch our hearts and speak to us today and every day we thank you for it in Jesus name